Uh, welcome to the IMS um, here in Los Angeles, IMS Engage. It's our fourth year here um, at the W and kind of our fifth if you count the pop-up we did at Coachella. Um, for those of you who don't know, the IMS started in Ibiza nine years ago. Uh, music conference focusing on electronic music. It's a three-day event, three-night event, um, loads of panels and lots of networking opportunities and obviously representing Ibiza. Um, here the format is a bit different. It's one day. We call it Engage. Um, it's kind of partly inspired by the TED Talks and the, the idea is to have five or six stimulating conversations um, on the stage that will hopefully uh, inspire you and they'll get a bit provocative. So um, we've got some interesting speakers today, certainly provocative. Uh, I'll be speaking to one of the leading entertainment um, bloggers on the planet, Bob Lefset. Uh, we're also going to be focusing on um, promoter versus agent discussion, the film business and technology. So um, yeah, I hope you're going to enjoy the day. A poignant kind of weird start to the day with the tragic news about losing Prince, and I'm sure that will come up during the day and we'll play some of his records later on over by the pool. Ben. Thank you, Pete. Uh, just to thank our sponsors, Pioneer, who've been with us from year one. They've got a, a stand out there where you can see some of their new equipment. They've got a pretty big year ahead of them. And then also W Hotels, who've also been our partners for seven or eight years and once again have given us this fantastic property. I'm just going to introduce Danielle Weeder. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we've been with IMS for a while, from Ibiza to Hollywood. It's been years and our love and passion for music is what brought us together and continues to bring us together. So welcome back to the W Hollywood. Um, and our, on our behalf, I would like to invite you all when today has wrapped to a great party out on the wet deck where we'll have a performance from Pete. Um, also Becky Tong, who is our music director out in Europe, bringing great music to our hotels in Europe. And then finally a performance from Billboard Emerging Artist Grab It. So it should be a great time. Drinks on us. So look forward to seeing you out there. Thank you all. Thank you. And uh, yeah, from the IMS partners, have a great day. We're going to begin very quickly with uh, a little chat from Matt Medved, who's a senior editor at Billboard. He focuses on the electronic music industry, been doing some great content to support this genre. He's got a few words to say. Enjoy. Thank you. Hi guys. Uh, first off, I want to thank Ben Turner, Pete Tong, Dom, and all the partners at IMS Engage for having me. Thank you also to W Hotels. It's an honor to be speaking to all of you. My name is Matt Medved. I lead Billboard's dance and electronic music coverage. I founded our new dance electronic uh, digital channel, Billboard Dance, last May. And since then, we've been trying to make a real investment in the space on Billboard's part. Uh, in the span of that, uh, 11 months, we've gone from, some t uh, from one to two billboard you know, dance articles per day to as many as 14. And uh, we've risen from about 250,000 monthly page views to more than 4 million. We've launched dedicated social media channels, embraced new technologies like VR and 360 video, and bolstered our presence on leading streaming platforms. You know, I have a, I have a belief that billboard dance really has a responsibility to represent a diversity of genres in this space. And I'm proud of the fact that we've covered, you know, in the past year, everyone from Justin Bieber to Blah Wan. And I want to continue to make sure that Billboard Dance is there uh, for everyone. You know, also, rather than solely reacting to what's going on in the charts, I've been trying to position Billboard Dance as a cutting edge tastemaker. We've been some of the, one of the first major publications to cover rising artists like Kygo and Gallant. And to that aim, we're launching a new partnership called Next Up in partnership with W Hotels here, which is going to focus on four new musicians um, that are part of the top 10 of our real-time emerging artist charts. And we're excited to kick off the event portion of that partnership tonight with Grabbits and, of course, Pete and Becky Tong. Now, look, there's been a lot of talk in recent weeks about EDM bubbles bursting, and I wanted to address that here, too, because I have some strong opinions on that. I think there's no question that we are seeing a correction in the market right now. But I take an issue with how this notion is often presented and more often misrepresented. In his article for Pitchpork, I thought Philip Sherburn wrote very wisely that the death of EDM doesn't necessarily mean the death of dance music, and it doesn't even herald the end of mass market dance music. 
but not everyone reads beyond the headlines in this day and age. First, I think the term EDM itself is flawed. Inside the industry, it's widely viewed as an aborted umbrella term turned pariah genre, but it's misleading because outsiders like brands and corporations don't understand that. And they don't understand that indiscriminately painting the likes of, say, Hardwell and Richie Houghton with the same EDM brush is like equating Maroon 5 and Black Sabbath. And that's not a knock on any of those acts, but it's a dangerously overbroad shortcut to thinking. And by the way, I used that exact example in my boss's office at Billboard when I was fighting to name our digital channel Billboard Dance and not Billboard EDM. And I'm pretty glad we prevailed in that one. But look, there's, there's no question that our industry is changing. Gone are the days when any cookie cutter dance music festival near college would sell out simply by existing and opening their doors. I believe the festivals that are, going to succeed, that are going to survive going forward are the ones that offer unique experiences and quality curation to fans. I also think that artists are going to have to adapt as well. And I think you're seeing the rise of live hybrid electronic acts as uh, an indication not only of um, you know, producers being willing to ditch the turntables they never really wanted to use in the first place, to, to, to embrace forms of performance that better showcase their skills within, within electronic artistry. I think it's also showing uh, a rising savviness on the part of the, uh, of the consumers, on the American dance music audience. And the fact that you're seeing these acts like Odessa and Big Gigantic and the like uh, being embraced um, and booked across you know, countless festivals is uh, something to be excited about because that also opens up room for the people who are DJs in the traditional sense of mixing and taking us on journeys to do that too. But look, I feel like dance and electronic music are here to stay. I believe dance music is now emerging as the cultural constant in America that it has been in Europe for decades. I'll never forget something Jean-Michel Jarre told me last year. And he said, look, like, people are so silly. They, they think electronic music is a genre when it's really just a new way of composing music. And to that, I would add, electronic music also has the same depth and breadth in its composition, creative, and consumer priorities as music with physical instruments. Just look at the crowds. Main stage sing-alongs for acts like the Chainsmokers, mirror pop performances. Kids headbanging at Bass Nectar shows would be doing the same thing to Slayer a few decades ago. There's a whole new generation that's come of age with electronic music ingrained in its culture, and they're passing that down to another generation, which are their siblings. So as for the demise of electronic music, I'll start worrying when kids stop making music on computers. Thank you very much.